Hey everybody, Resmatter here, and welcome to part 30 of my Fate Stay Night Let's Play. Uh, the last episode was a pretty action-filled one. It was really good. Uh, we had quite a few things going on, so Shiro, you know, being the thick-headed person that he is, decided to just go to school and pretend everything is normal against Tosaka's warning. Um, and that didn't go over very well with her. Uh, she straight up attacked him, I guess as like a warning to show him that he has no chance when he doesn't have Saber with him and that he really should listen and not get himself um, involved and like just stay home. But all that was kind of like they decided to have a truce once they realized that there was something else going on at the school. A uh, student got attacked and we saw a glimpse of Shinji and Ryder, so they have made their appearance uh, quite early on, actually. And after Rin managed to save us, we have agreed that we are going to work together to take out the Master at the school. So Shiro has not told her that he saw Shinji, so he's keeping that to himself. Uh, so they're going to work together to take care of that Master since like that person is attacking people at the school. And then they're going to be enemies after, but we know that that's not the case. So anyway, we're going to get back into it. Let's see what happens next. なるほどね。道理がおかしいと思った。つまりエミヤ君は正式な後継者じゃないんだ。魔術国員を引き継ぐ前にお父さんが死んじゃったんでしょ。どうなのかな。親父は俺に魔術国員を引き継がせる気は
Tosaka grits her teeth. What's she so irritated about? She's showing enmity, uh, enmity like she never has before. そんな奴に鍛えられたあなたも魔術師なんて認めないから。トウサカ、落ち着け。何怒ってるんだよ、お前。いや、確かにお前に比べたら俺は魔術師なんて名乗れないけど、親父は立派な魔術師だったぞ
but we didn't get too much insight into her. So this is where we're really gonna get to, to like dig into her character. I don't know why Tosaka's mad. What Tosaka thought when she was raised in this house. How much she sacrificed to train as the daughter of a family of magi. I can't put myself in her place, no matter how hard I try. Nah, Tosaka. もしかしてそれで俺を目の敵にしてたのか。魔術師としての心構えがなってないから。そうよ。あなたのことは嫌いじゃないけど、魔術師としては認められないもの。どこらその。つい急を据えるっていうか、つつきたくなったの。悪い
I confront the knight in red. He smiles as if to make fun of me and shrugs his shoulders. My spirits weaken. Kiritsugu certainly said so. Magi are tinged with blood. It doesn't matter if you hurt or don't hurt anyone. This path is a path wet with blood. That's why Kiritsugu told me not to be a magus. God, it would have been hilarious if he had actually got an archer. Oh. oh, they would have been at each other's throats. Would have been amazing. なんだそれ。父さんが血の匂いがするっていうのか。するとも。あれは伊佐坂甘すぎる嫌いはあるが、それでも手を下す時は容赦すまい。そうでなくては、連日マスターを探して町を巡回などしないさ。She's looking for other masters every day? That means she's fighting other masters. It's not like it's over once she finds a master. Then... The event at school. The same thing that happened in the woods today. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, maybe he also doesn't like Shiro because he's like, Rin is weak around you. He knows, he knows she has a thing for him, and he doesn't like the fact that she's showing weakness. サーバントはマスターに従うものだ。そうだろ、エミヤシロ。たとえマスターが役に立たない未熟ものでも、サーバントは従わなければならないということだ。Damn. I feel like he wasn't quite this mean last time. <laughs> Is he talking about me and Saber? そうかよ。父さんも気の毒だな。お前みたいなひねくれ者と組まされてな。全く呆れる。まだそんなことを口にするのか。忠告するが、サーバントの性格など考慮するな。我らはただ戦うために呼び出されたもの。所詮サーバントは、レイジで繋がれた道具に過ぎない。I can't tell him that's not the case. What Archer, the one bound by the command spell, said is definitely true. I can't think of Saber as a tool, but it is true that Saber is bound by the command spell. Ugh. I don't have a reason. I just didn't like him, so I wanted to complain to him. <laughs> You know what, props to Jiro for, like, he wants to get it all out in the open, I guess. He, he definitely, like, if he has something to say to somebody, he says it. I ask an obvious question in desperation. Then... Hmm, interesting. Okay. <laughs> if they didn't hate each other so much, they both are like a servant and a master who have no interest in the Holy Grail. But yet, why is he... Why was he summoned then? The knight in red declares contemptuously. That's contradictory. Servants desire the Holy Grail. Isn't that why they answer the call of the Magus and become servants? Well, there must be another reason why he's here. なら Don't have free will? Does that mean he was called against his will, even though he doesn't want the Holy Grail? 
don't know. I thought that they talked about how it's like that's the reason that the servants are called and they form the contracts is because they also want the Holy Grail. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. That I, I assumed, I guess, that like all the servants wanted to do this at least for their own benefit as well. So the fact that they can just be ripped out and being forced to fight, even if they don't want to. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. If they're called heroic spirits, they should be pure. <laughs> Jeez, like, yeah, you haven't, in this route, he hasn't met the other ones yet. Uh, there are definitely some that are not pure. In fact, most of them probably aren't. They've done some heinous things. That's why I imagined them protecting people, but that's not the case for a lot of the servants I've encountered. そうだ。元々エレートというものに意志などない。エレートなったものは以後ただ人間を守る力として置かれるだけだ。何かこちらで不都合があった場合のみ呼び出され、その interesting. Okay, so yeah, it's like you, you make it like they made it seem before with most of the servants, although I mean there were servants like Castor, right, who killed their own master, uh, like they went against them. Um, but you think it's kind of like a, a give and take. It's like they're both working towards a shared goal of wanting the Holy Grail. This almost feels like he's a slave, well, servant and master, right? It's like he's doing this against his will. I wonder if he feels any sort of animosity towards Rin. Like he seems to respect her ability, but like he doesn't want to be doing this. Also, yeah, like the fact that they're heroic spirits and yet they're the ones that have to like listen to humans, that's gotta feel really um, demoralizing. One that is summoned only to disappear. Heroic spirits are tools without a will? It seems like this route is definitely going to delve more into the kind of twisted aspect of the whole servant-master relationship. この戦いは良くできている。本来本体 that must mean they can be set free as an individual and not a servant. And to add, the Holy Grail has powers to grant wishes. If it allows them to grant the wishes they had before they died, it's natural for servants to cooperate with their masters. So the Holy Grail must be a miracle for the servants as well. なんでお前はいらないって言うんだ。叶えられなかった願いを叶えられるし、サーバントで亡くなることだってできるっていうのに。単純な話だ。私には叶えられない願いなどなかった。え他の連中とは違う。I wonder if that's going to be a hint of who he is. I still have no idea who Archer is, though. Okay, 
それはお前のサーバントも同じだろうさバカ言うなセイバーは聖杯が必要だって言ったんだお前みたいに目的がなくてサーバントをやってるわけじゃない私のもアーチャーマーマーズ Why is it? It's just a normal murmur, but a chill runs through me. <laughs> Mok taking our o t o n a k a r o t or Najida. Kinina no Narva, Toita dash to Mirgai. Saber no Mok Tekua, say hi, Daddy Nagara. Okay, so he knows a lot about Saber, too. He knows, he knows, I doubt he knows who she is. Like, so me, who heroic Saber is. I don't think she was a Mojidori. Dore Nanoda. Or maybe he just pegs her as like she's the type to, you know, be, um, like, because she's a noble knight, so, like she won't use things for herself. So, yeah, they're talking about like the fact that they're like servants and slaves. His presence disappears. The knight in red talks cynically until the very end and leaves. Even though I don't feel like it, I follow my habit as I go into my house. I feel liveliness from the living room. I bet Fujine is watching TV and Sakura is preparing dinner. Saber, is she in the living room? What, they're having just a girl's night? <laughs> Painting each other's nails? Talking about boys? I recall Archer's words and shake my head. I don't know what he wanted to say, nor do I want to know. But it's stuck in my head and it won't go away. A familiar called a servant. His honest opinion, scorning heroic spirits as mere cleaners. <laughs> Even though she's in the middle of cooking, she comes out to greet me. Looking, I see that everything's been cut up already. Knowing how good Sakura is, I bet all she has to left do, all she has left to do is cook it. It's funny how, like, the last route, you know, granted because it's the Saber route, like, she was front and center. This one, she seems like, where it's, like, flipped, whereas Rin was the background character in the last one. And now it seems like Saber, we barely interact with her. If Sakura is hesitating to say it, it must mean Saber's really mad. It's only natural, though, since I broke our promise of me coming home before dark. <laughs> I love how she just says it straight up. Sakura's trying to be. <laughs> She's trying to be, like, diplomatic about it. Fujine says something really scary when she munches on a mandarin. Fujine. I see. So my enemies aren't just other masters. There's another one hiding here as well. What if Fujini was a master? Be amazing. セイバーを道場に連れて行ったのか稽古するなら市内を使えってうん、さっきカルクテ合わせしたんだけどあの子とんでもないわよ剣道を知らないくせに私以上に剣道家っぽいんだもんあの子、向こうでフェンシングでも
、ミツズリのこと。Oh, yeah, ミツズリ、ツーリー、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、ミツズリ、生徒会室で盗み聞きしたんだそれでどうなんだよ三つ釣り見つかったのかおお、everything got quiet おお、I stare at Fujine Fujine is a teacher even if she may not seem like one she keeps quiet about things she shouldn't talk about and I'm sure she would tell a lie to comfort a student so I have to stare at her to notice any changes while I ask about Mitsuzuri どうなんだ Fujine やっぱり一向に変化なしなのか仕方ないな黙ってたら今すぐ飛び出しそうだし絶対秘密って話でもないしけどシロ今回は特別だからねシロが三つ釣さんの友人だから教えてあげるのよ It's nothing good 分かってる恩に切るから、oh, Sakura must know too right like they're in they're in the club together so I'm sure Sakura must know. じゃあ結論から。ミツズリさん、さっき保護されたわよ。Okay. 今頃は検査も終わって、okay. 家に帰ってるんじゃないかしら。Okay. So she's alive for now, but if she got her magical, like if she got her energy zap similar to that girl、uh, that's, that we found, she's probably going to die if we don't like get to her. ちょっと意識が混濁してるらしいけど、外傷もないし、命に別状もないって。それ以上の話はない。私は友達だよ。三つさん本人から聞きなさい。そうか。とにかく、大事はなかったんだな。あいつ。Thank God. I don't know what Mitsuzuri got into, but I know it has something to do with the strange incidents happening in the town. It's likely the source of this is the master to my school. I don't know what I would have done if something happened to Mitsuzuri. そうだ。さくら、ちょっといいか。何ですか先輩いや大したことじゃないただそのがどうしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもしてもし昨日はこちらに泊めてもらって学校に行ったでしょだから家には帰ってないんです先生にも兄さんが無断欠席したって聞いたんですけどその事情はわからないかそうだよなさくらが知ってるわけないしごめん見当違いなことを聞いちまったいえそんなことありません兄さんのことは私が一番よく知っているんですから兄さんが休んだ理由ぐらい気づかないといけないでしょいやそんなことはないだろう実際さくらがうちにいてくれて助かったし The event in the woods The person there was really Shinji He has to have some kind of connection with the servant in black Then there's the worst case possibility that he's a master If that's the case wouldn't it be dangerous to let Sakura go back to her house? 先輩、それはどういうさくら、今夜もうちに泊まってけ。着替えなら藤根のを使っていいから。え、先輩、それはできるなら、しばらく泊まり続けてくれると助かる。いや、さくらが迷惑だって言うなら帰ってくれていいんだが。Oh, but it's absurd. It's troubling to be asked so suddenly to stay over. I'm sure Sakura is like jumping with joy on the inside because I mean, she doesn't have a great relationship with her brother. We, knows, we know that she likes、um, Shiro. I bow my head and apologize. Then. Sakura agrees so quietly that it's almost lost in the sound of the cooking stew. 
It's getting late. I went to the dojo with Saber after dinner to receive my punishment. Oh, we don't even get to see it? Wow, she really is like in the background in this one. Saber called it training, but I swear she was just beating me up. And when we finished, it was past 10 o'clock. It seems that they're sleeping together again today, as Fujine and Sakura go to the Japanese-style room. Shiro, what did you do? Did you go back to the house? Hmm? Yes, I'm going back. But before that, I want to talk to Saber to Saber. Do you want to talk to me? Please. If I can answer I guess I'll get right to the point. What Archer said. Servants who have no freedom seek the Holy Grail to obtain freedom. It has to be the case for Saber, but he said Saber would not wish for freedom. Saber. I mean, we know that to be the case. Yes. Yes.我的目的は聖杯です。そのためにはわたしは英霊になった。それは以前にも話したはずですが。わかってる。それは何のためなんだ。聖杯さえ手に入れれば、サーバントはマスターがいなくてもこっちに留まってられるんだろう。なら、聖杯は聖杯を手に入れて、ここでやりたいことをやるんだよな。いいえ、聖杯を手に入
Okay, so we'll say, I guess that's how it, how it will be. Or do I say I can't say? I'm, it's funny, I said how, like, it doesn't really matter, and yet I'm still doubting my choice here. I say, say, I guess that's how it will be. I guess that's true, no matter how much I smooth this over. Tosaka will challenge me, even if I refuse to fight. If that happens, it will just be more painful for Tosaka if I get killed by her without putting up a fight. <laughs> それでいいんだろ、セイバー。はい。それを理解してくれているのなら、私からは何もありません。リンと協力し、シロの戦闘経験を増やすとしましょう。Saber bows and leaves. Battles are unavoidable as long as I'm a master. We will eventually fight as long as we're alive. When that time comes, will I be able to fight Tosaka, like Saber said? I'm dreaming. Using a small connection like a blood vessel, I see a memory that I cannot reach. It is his memories. At the very least, it's not mine. This is someone else's story. Oh, is this from Rin's point of view? Like, looking into Archer? It's so long ago, he doesn't even recall it. It's so old, he doesn't even try to recall it. It's so ancient that he cannot recall it. It is a heavy burden of a contract that has been established and cannot be withdrawn. It's not like he wanted something. If anything, he was the kind of guy that could not put up with anything. He cannot put up with having people cry around him. He cannot put up with having people get hurt around him. He cannot put up with having people die around him. That's the only reason he had. And for that reason only, he tried to help everybody in his sight. Oh. Okay, is this Kiritsuku? He was clumsy and it made you worry if you were looking at him. Who, who's, whose memories are we looking at? But he would accomplish it in the end, and I think he changed a lot of people's lives. I'm sure his life was a happy one. His clumsy battles were not meaningless. He was able to save people proportional to how much he got hurt and how many times he faced death. <laughs> Sounds like Shiro. Um, but there's one pitfall. I set everybody in his sight, but one can never look at oneself. So in the end, he could not save the most important person of all. Himself. This feels like this could be talking about quite a few people. Could be Kiritsugu, but he did save someone. He saved Shiro. It sounds like Shiro possibly in the future. This could be Archer. We don't know who he is. I don't know how it ended up like that. No, it should be the other way around. It was a wonder it didn't end up like this earlier. Anyway, it was a terrible disaster. A lot of people died, and a lot of people were facing death. Something that could not be solved with his powers alone. With many people, in, uh, many deaths in front of him, he... <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to pinpoint whose voice that is. Let me let's make a contract. I'll give you my life after death. I would like the compensation now. Huh. That's is that Archer? Yeah, he yes, he made a contract with something as mysterious as the world. Throwing away himself to save people. It is the birth of a hero. Oh, maybe that is Archer and me. He became a heroic spirit. That's all. There's nothing after that. Even if he's called a hero, it doesn't change what he does. From the beginning. So, like, if that is Archer, maybe it's a whole thing about, like, two people hating each other because they're so alike, in a way. If Because that sounded a lot like Shiro about the whole thing. He wanted to save people. And he was willing to give up himself in order to do so. From the beginning, it was not his objective to be a hero. It's just that he needed the power of a hero in the process. But his end came rather quickly. An excellent savior is nothing but a nuisance for the people that are not getting saved. He understands his own powers and the extent of the world. He accepts what can be saved and what cannot be saved. That's why he wanted at least the people in his sight to be happy. A lot of people call it hip uh, hypocrisy. Many despised it as an extreme value. The way he silently pursued his ideal was something he should have been proud of. But in the end, he met an uncompensated end, as the contract promised. And there's those swords again. The unlimited blades, I guess. He reaches the place. He had friends and a lover. He lost all of them, and he was cornered by the ideal he pursued. He had no place to go. 
He was burdened with many voices of resentment, but still kept fighting. He knew of his fate, but he acted like he tried to perform miracles, and using his fate as a support. But that comes to an end. The place he reaches at the end is a hill of swords. His battle ends on the hill among the rusted, ownerless steel. So this is Archer, obviously. We had Saber's dreams, and now we have Archer's dreams. Still alone, but he smiles in satisfaction as he lets go of the sword. As if saying there is nothing to regret if he was able to save everybody that came into his sight. And it's Shiro. It's Shiro having those thoughts. That's right. The last time he he had that dream too. So it's, does he have like a connection with Archer? Which is weird because it's not his servant. My body feels heavy. My awakening comes with a headache. I'm so confused. I murmur while getting up. It's past six o'clock. I jump out of my futon and change instantly. Fujine and Sakura have morning practice. They'll be leaving here around 6.30, so I won't make it unless I hurry. After I see them off, I drink tea with Saber. Time flies by and it's past 7 o'clock before I realize it. I wave goodbye and leave. The morning air is peaceful, but the place I'm heading to isn't normal anymore. I get myself mentally ready as I go down the hill. Tosak is acting like a master, so I should act as one too. Funny, it's very different, yeah, because like before I was staying at home with Saber all the time, and now I'm at school. I get to class right on time. I greet people as I make my way to my... <laughs> on my way, my eyes catch a glimpse of someone and my mind goes blank. Is it Shinji? It is. I don't need to think. I run straight to Shinji. Shinji? Oh my! Yeah, Enya. What happened? You were a What?僕が休んでる時に何かあったの何かあったじゃない。お前、三つ釣りに何をした三つ釣りああ、あやこね。何でも家出してたらしいじゃん。僕も今朝道場で聞いたよ。昨日シントの方で見つかったんだってね。I ミツズリと最後に会ったのはお前だろ。その時、あいつに何をしたかって聞いてるんだよ、俺は。は何をしたかって。ただの世間。それよりさ、聞いたかいエニア。綾子のやつ。そこいらの路地裏に転がってたん
The homeroom bell rings. I can't stay standing when everyone's sitting down. I glare at Shinji one more time and head to my seat. The day ends. School's over and the students head home one after another. I could have questioned Shinji, but I don't have any proof right now. Even if I told him about seeing him in the woods yesterday, it would amount to nothing if he tells me he just happened to be there. I don't know if he's a master or not, but I'm sure he has something to do with Mitsuzuri's case. Well, I'm sure no master is going to allow me to do that. I mean, I'm sure if Rin told him to strip, he would. I get up. I promised Tosaka I'd meet her in the hallway after school. I get together with Tosaka and look around the whole school. According to Tosaka, the boundary field has its foundation set up throughout the school. Tosaka has been searching and erasing them, but it seems that they keep coming back up or new ones are created, preventing Tosaka from completely eliminating the boundary field. That's the case according to her. I call out to Tosaka after she eliminates the mark on the rooftop. あ、いや、それとは別件。ここにはもうおかしなところはない。俺の方はここで打ち止めた。そう。なら生きている地獄はほとんど消せたかな。エミヤ君、魔力感知はできないくせに、場所の異常には敏感なんだもの。まさかこ
じゃあもし遠坂の身近にいる人間がマスターでもそんな道具を持っていたらわからないってことかどうかなものによるけどどんなに隠しても近くにいればわかると思うサーバントと契約している以上どうしても世界との摩擦は起きるから身近にいてもマスターかどうかわからないってことはそのマスターはサーバントを使っていないってことよまあ例外はあるかもしれないけど9割方はそう考えて間違いないと思うわウィルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥルトゥ二度目は黙ってられない性格でしょうこいつ<笑>そんなもんなのかそんなもんよさて私は用事があるから先に帰るわ明日の決戦に備えていろいろ買わなくちゃいけないしそれじゃあまた明日それと今日は早めに帰りなさい寄り道なんてしたらダメだからねんなんだ心配してくれるんだ、どうさか。違うわよ。<笑>協力関係になったんだから、勝手に脱落されちゃう予定が狂うじゃない。今のはそれだけのちょっとした確認事項。どうさか says so quickly. Her panic is so unlike her, and it's obvious that she is only hiding her embarrassment. I see. I'm beginning to understand more about どうさか。ともかくエミア君は無防備すぎるんだからあんまり軽率な行動はしないこと私は例外で他の連中は即命を奪いに来るんだからねトサカ looks away and tries to leave seeing her leave I suddenly トサカ今もアーチャーはそばにいるのか murmur something meaningless いるけど何あいつに話でもあるの Maybe this isn't so much me falling in love with Tosaka. He's becoming weirdly obsessed with Archer. いや、別に。トサカはうまくやってるのかなと思って。トサカ looks back at me in wonder at the sudden question. Then. ふふ、そういうこと。ええ、心配無用よ。あいつひねくれてるけど、いいやつだもの。ああ見えても子供っぽいし。付き合っていく分には楽しいわ。Saying so happily, Tosaka disappears down the stairs. Or maybe jealousy. Maybe jealousy of Archer is like, hmm, he's like buff, attractive, powerful. He's like, he's a potential competition. Mitsuzuri's case might still be affecting me as I am at the archery range before I know it. The range is far from the school building and it seems deserted. The club activities are over, so there's nothing to find here. Kairuka. I turn around and head to the gate. And between me and the gate,、uh, it's going to be Shinji, isn't it? Of course. Stands Mato Shinji as if to block my way. Yeah. I don't think I can be calm facing Shinji here. I ignore him and keep walking. Oh, geez, he's just coming right out. I mean, we did see him in the forest, so he probably knows we have an inkling it's him. His voice sounds delighted. I jump back and ready myself. そんなことを言えるってことはお前 I glare at Shinji ああそういうことお前がしらみつぶしにしてくれた結界はさ僕が仕掛けた保険なんだぜそれをあんな風に消されちゃこっちは怖くて学校に来れなくなるじゃないか I see so this is how stupid I am I knew about it when I saw Shinji in the woods, but I rejected the idea because I was unprepared for the truth. Mate, 
So now this is where he's going to like, let's team up and take her out. ケンカは嫌いなんだよ、僕は。話し合う。俺とやり合う気はないっていうのか。そんなのあるもんか。見たところ、エミアもマスターなんてものに無理やりさせられたんだろ。僕もそれと同じでね。魔術師でもなければ
imagine when we do the the final routes, the Sakura routes, we're probably going to get into more of that whole thing. I see. That's really good. Sakura shouldn't be involved in all this. I want her to be smiling happily all the time. Shinji,お前が何もしないんなら、俺もお前には何もしない。それでもんくはないだろう。そう。協力はできないってこと？する必要なんかないだろう。お互い戦わないんなら、協力するもしないもない。自分の身を守りたいだけなら。Right, exactly, the whole thing about, like, if he truly didn't want to be part of this, he would basically just give up his command spells and just go to the church and hide out. I have no intention of fighting, but I'll fight anyone that attacks me, and I can't just ignore people that will bring disaster to this town. And I turn my back to Shinji. So okay. そんなの当たり前だ。お前こそ桜には隠し通すんだろうな。もちろん。けど兄貴としてさ、これから殺し合いを続けるってやつの家に妹は置いておけない。お前が戦うって言うんなら、聖杯戦争が終わるまで桜
驚いてるって言えば驚いたそのいつもと何もかも違うから Actually, I don't remember how many years it's been since I last saw her doing something like cooking. It's a little chigo. Ah, so ka. Sakura chan no koto ne? Sakura chan nara kaeta wa yo. Ochi no hito kara den wa ga atte yobi mo do sare chata. Thinking that we were gonna go visit Mitsuzuri to like ask her about what happened to her. Maybe later. So ka. Shinji no yatsu. Shokse tsu den wa shite kita no ka. It's needless help, but I guess he wanted to take care of it as quickly as possible. Shinji kun? After tilting her head in question, Fujini goes back to the kitchen. I'm a bit curious. It's not completely dark yet, so I. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see. I'll stop Fujini's wrongdoing before the sunset. I'll go see how Sakura's doing before the sun sets, and I'll go tell Saber I'm home. Okay, I don't think this option makes a difference. I feel like I shouldn't go see Sakura because I feel like that might cause issues. I'm gonna have to check this real quick. So yeah, it doesn't seem like it makes a difference, but I still feel like I barely see Saber.、Um, so since this one isn't going to cause any issues, I will go see her. Just s a b e r you can't get it. どういう風の吹き回しか知らないけど、夕飯は任せていいのか？<笑>いいよ、オッケー。美味しいカニ玉作ってあげるから期待してなさいよ。I am a bit worried, but、uh, カニ玉 is like an omelet, so Fujini should be able to handle it. ただいま、セイバー。I take my shoes off as I go into the dojo. おかえりなさいしよ。その様子では大きな動きはなかったようですね。セイバー must like the atmosphere since she's always here. I match セイバー and sit Japanese style to tell her what happened today about how we eliminated the boundary field at school and how Tosaka is expecting a counter attack tomorrow. なるほど。敵マスターとの戦いは明日ですか。では今夜は十分に睡眠をとり、力を蓄えねばなりませんね。<laughs> Don't eat Fujini's food and get food poisoning and be out of commission. <laughs> That'd be bad. I nod back. I know I'm being too optimistic, but I don't tell her about Shinji. I don't want her to consider him as an enemy until I figure out his true intentions. しかし、シロ、もうじき夕食ですが、ここにいていいのですかんいや、別にこれといった用事はないし、夕飯まで時間があるから。Also, to make up for the other day when I didn't come home until late and then all that stuff happened and I didn't tell Saber about it. It would be funny if <laughs> this led to like a bad end. Like, we ate her cooking and then we got like horribly sick and then we, we got jumped by like a master and servant while we were, you know, recovering and died. <laughs> Feels like this was the bad choice. She agrees. She's like, you should have helped her with dinner. しし I give her a weird explanation. But Saber frowns. She makes sure with a threatening tone. And then after this, she never trusts me again. Saber relaxes her shoulders. Man, who could have imagined that this was going to lead to such a disaster? It's time for dinner. Fujini's special Kanitama bowl is ready on the table. 
It's a simple dish where there's rice in the bowl and kanitama put on top of it. It looks like there's a yellow lid on the bowl and it honestly doesn't look good. But it should make the rice taste better since it's in a bowl. It's like katsu bowl and teriyaki bowl. There's no way it could taste bad because the good taste of the ingredients seep into the rice. The only drawback is the taste is simple, but that's a small price to pay. Mm. We bow and dig into our food. Then, <laughs> the food isn't soft like Kanitama. No, it feels strange like I'm eating a main dish. <laughs> this isn't an emergency or anything. This is more like an uh, okonomiyaki bowl. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Saber's like, I thought I could trust you. Our bond is broken. I wanted her to realize the mistake right then. I thought being able to make an omelet was a function every human being was born with. Kanitama is just a variant of an omelet. It was my mistake to assume that Fujini couldn't mess up something like that. That's right, Fujini couldn't even cook an omelet. <laughs> then, I hear a voice filled with disappointment. Seiba. I slowly turn to her. <laughs> Shiro, Crap, it's hard to tell, but it seems like Saber is mad. The hellish dinner ends and it's time for a sh uh, strategy meeting, but I've already reported to Saber about what happened today. Damn it! <laughs> Since it's likely that there will be a fight tomorrow, we should be preparing. So, <laughs> I'm inexperienced as a master, and Saber has a limit to how many times she can fight since I'm not giving her any magical energy. We can't be leisurely looking for masters in our situation. Saber stares at me. She doesn't even need to tell me. I brought Saber to this dojo with that in mind. あれ、いい教訓になったんだ。勝てない奴には何をやっても勝てない。そんな初歩的なこと、セイバーと向き合うまで気づかなかった。そういった心構えの意味も含めて、セイバーと手合わせするのは大切だと思う。どのくらい効
問答無用それにしろ意識を失う前に言っておきますがあれはやむなくです今後それを忘れぬようにあサイバー・ディスピアス Oh man, so I'll go through four hours of torture now, huh? Grudges over food sure are scary. Saber, no yatsu. Yaru to not tra, honki de, te kagen nash de yan no. I get into my futon. My body's covered in bruises and pain killing patches, and I'm sure it will all be sore tomorrow. Skareta. I take a breath. I trained my strengthening magic after Saber's training, and I'm tired both physically and mentally. Saber and Fujini are sleeping in a room a bit far away from here, but I don't care. I'm just tired. I'll sleep for now and prepare for tomorrow. Oh, what's this? Is that. That sounded like Caster. Am I dreaming? My mind is dozing off. My body's asleep, and I can't move a finger. Then this has to be a dream. It's a dark night. My ears are ringing. My feet are asleep, but I'm walking down the hill. Oh, is Castor like. Did she put a spell on me? Maybe I'm just imagining it, but that sounds like her voice. It's cold. The wind is blowing on me, and since I'm in my pajamas, my body's freezing. This coldness is unlike Fuyuki City. The chill would be cold enough to wake me up if this were a dream. Oh, yeah. I walk through the empty town. The annoying sound won't stop. Ignoring my shivering body, my feet are moving towards somewhere. I'm going to the temple, aren't I? I try to scream and realize my throat is frozen. This isn't a dream. This can't be a dream, but my mind is still asleep. My limbs, they aren't following my orders, and they're walking on as if manipulated by something. Yep, this must be the destination. And that's a long walk. Isn't it like a, an hour bike ride? So he's been walking for like a long time. My feet move faster as they move up the stairs. The ringing in my ears turns into a voice. No, that's wrong. The sound hasn't changed at all. It's been repeating the same thing over and over. What fills my head is a female voice filled with magical energy. I see the mountain gate. Something is on the other side. And if I cross that gate, I won't come out alive. I don't know what it is, but my dozing mind screams for me to run away. Go back, go back, go back. Stop. You can still make it. Wake up and go back. Wake up. My consciousness wakes up. My head clears and my will finally returns. But it's too late. My limbs don't obey me as they go through the mountain gates. Damn, we're going here early. Like, we're meeting Castor very early in comparison to the last time. The only certain thing is my mind. My body does not listen to my will and walks into the Ryodo temple following the voice. The temple is covered in darkness. In the center stands something with an inhuman magical energy. I love how different this is. We're meeting everybody in all, like, in different orders. Well, sort of. No, it, like, the first part of it was, like, the same. It was Lancer, then Archer, then Berserker, then Rider. Uh, but this is definitely different. Very different. The figure wavers like a mirage. The shadow reminding me of death strips off the darkness. And, and because we're meeting her so soon, maybe we'll actually get to see who her master is. The figure becomes a witch like one would see in a fairy tale. A sneering laugh. It seems my body is under her control. My feet that never stopped freeze at the command. My consciousness wavers. My limbs still do not move, and an unknown enemy is standing before me. She is an enemy. I can be sure of that. She's a servant, a heroic spirit that excels the most in magic out of the seven servants. 
I move my throat with all my effort and glare at my enemy. Her cool voice is mocking me. I put power into my legs, but my body will not move. Damn, what the hell am I doing? I've been lured here, and on top of that, I can't move a muscle. <laughs> I concentrate on my limbs with all my power. Could I call Saber here? Like, it's a thing as long as you can will it. I don't know what kind of a trick it is, but it has to be her magic that's restraining me. But then again, that might be exactly what she wants me to do, like with what Ryder did when she had me use the command spell and then chop my arm off. Then if I can extract her magical energy out of my body... <laughs> I concentrate all my will to search throughout my body. Caster's magical energy. The enemy's magical energy that's inside me, restraining my body. Hopefully Rin comes again to my rescue. I look inside my body while keeping my eyes open. It's all right. It's nothing difficult if I'm calm. I identify the flow of magical energy every night. I just have to do what I've been doing and identify Castor's poison inside of me. Even if I can't get it out of my body, I can concentrate it into one of my limbs so that I can move the other three. <coughs> How can this be? Castor's magical energy is not mixed within me. The only poison-like element is this one small point on my chest. But all my body is acting abnormally. It's not that there's something wrong with the blood flowing in me. There's something abnormal. It's not my bo uh, my blood, but the blood vessels themselves. It's like having my heart locked up. The red spot on my chest has to be Castor's magical energy. One cursed word is taking my body's authority away. It means I was cursed when I was sleeping. Even if I was asleep, it should have been impossible for me to be seized by a magic cast from so far away. Magi have magic resistance. It's the power to repel magic, such as hypnotism, binding, and coercion. As long as one is a magus, one cannot be easily controlled by others. It's a fundamental law. Magi have magic circuits. The circuit in one's body does not only make magical energy, but can also repel external magical energy. Therefore, it's difficult to interfere with someone with a magic circuit, and it's difficult even to control a magus several ranks lower than you. As the magic circuit repels external magical energy, magic is destroyed before it can be completed. For that reason, indirect intervention magic, such as hypnotism and binding, has a low success rate. Even if the target is not a magus, the magic can be repelled unconsciously if the target has a magic circuit. From that point of view, an intervention of just attacking with pure magical energy like Tosaka does, making a weapon in this world and attacking the opponent as a result, is a simple method. Physical impact works on everyone. It does not matter if the target has a magic circuit or not, as people will bleed if they are cut with a knife. That's why this situation is strange. I'm sure I could be affected if I had a magic cast on me from close range. If I had met Caster before and she had cast coercion on me, it's probable I could be controlled even at a distance. But I've not met Caster before, nor have I had a curse cast on me. So this is our first meeting. Without moving from here, Caster cast a spell to the faraway Emia house and controlled my body. The word witch pops into my head. She can control Omegas' body from a distance of a few uh, kilometers. Does that mean that Caster can control everyone in this town from here? My spirits weaken. As the magic's complete, there is no way I can dispel it. I can't do anything unless Caster releases me or I get some outside help. <laughs> あなたを縛っているのは私の魔力ではなく、魔術そのもの。一度成立した魔術は魔力という水では洗い流せない。液体と固体のようなものよ。形を得たものに水をかけても、その形は崩れないでしょ。The shadow steps closer to me. The bluish purple robe melting into the night is smiling. けれど例外もあるわ。
理解できて私とあなたたちの違いはそういう次元の話なのよそうかねやそれではさまさんこんなところまで呼びつけたわけかええマスターたちは皆小物だけどその中でもあなたは飛び抜けて力不足でしたから何しろ町の人間たちと変わらない高魔力ですものそんなマスターを見つけたらこうして話をしたくなるのは当然でしょ She smiles. She shows superiority as if I'm her prey. A chill runs through me. Don't lie about wanting to talk to me. She's ready to kill me at any moment. Hora, mata go kai. Anshin na sai. Koro shite shimatte wa maryoku o sui yage rare nai wa? Kono machi no ningen wa mina watashi no mono desu kara ne. Koro sa nai teido ni ika shi tsuzukete. Sai go no itte ki made sashi dashite mora wa nai to. Her laugh echoes in my ears. <coughs> A missing piece fits inside my head. Did she just say she will suck up all the magical energy from the people in this town? Caster smiles even more. It seems like she's pondering how to kill her prey. Nara, I'll teach you. I'm the servant of Caster. I have the ability to create a power. The magician is a powerful person. It's the same thing. I built this place to protect you from the enemy. At this time, the servant is a servant of the servant.人知としては優れているし何より魔力を集めやすい初めはあまりにもあなたたちの魔力が少なくて加減がつかなかったけれど今はほどよく集められるわほら見えるでしょこの土地にたまった数百人分の魔力の貯蔵うぞうむぞう
a bewitching smile. The glowing fingers reach out from my left hand like a crawling spider. Either Saber, all right. Yeah, Saber's gonna come get me. I was like, it's either gonna be Saber or Rin, or maybe Berserker. That would be wild if Ilya came and helped me be like, I want to be the one to kill him. How long had it taken her to notice that something is wrong? She wakes up to a strange feeling and goes out into the hallway. Shiro. She first thinks the feeling might be coming from her master. It is because the strange feeling is coming from Emi Ashiro's room. The golden-haired girl, Saber, sighs. It's good that he's enthusiastic, but he will collapse unless he rests while he can. And when she decides to go warn him, she realizes her own mistake. She gasps after confirming it. The strange feeling isn't coming from Shiro's room. Under the moonlight, a string, thin as her hair, runs through the darkness. The string is going into Shiro's room from outside. A thin string that even the boundary field here does not catch. If one is to give praise to the one who pulled off such a thing, one also needs to give praise to Saber for noticing such a thing. There is no time to think. The girl turns into a knight in an instant and runs outside. She runs through the empty town. There is no hesitation in Saber as she runs. She knows where she must go. She only needs to follow the string, the beat of her master. Well, if she's getting into a fight here, then she's going to be at a disadvantage tomorrow if that fight with Shinji happens. The only thing she has to do is to run as fast as she can. It makes no difference whether her destination is the enemy's territory, nor how many traps might await her. She is sworn to protect her master, so anything that might befall her is negligible. It's a mountain stained with vast amounts of magical energy. Ghosts of the dead are flying above like crows, and the trees are covered with invisible blood. The collected magical energy, the stolen souls, remains here, and the mountain should consume anyone that may approach it. If there is such a thing as a place to die, this place is the perfect example. She goes in without hesitation. She had no intention to stop from the start. If this place is hell, she is to save her master all the more. She runs up the stone stairs. The traps she had anticipated are not there. The mountain gate is within her view, and she should reach it with one more kick from her magical energy-filled legs. But her advance stops right there. No, it is stopped by the enemy. Hey, there's Assassin. Are we going to see him for more than, like, five minutes this time? So what, are they working together? Because, like, Assassin and Caster are both in the- is it? Do we have a similar situation? Because we don't know Assassin's master. Like, do we have a similar situation where, um, where Kyrie had two servants that were working for him? Do we have someone controlling both Assassin and Caster? On the stairs leading to the mountain gates stands a servant. His name is Sasaki Kojiro. Servant Assassin, the protector of the Ryodo Temple, wielding the longsword Monoho- Oh my gosh, okay. Monohoshizo. Probably butcher that. <laughs> Saber's mind is disturbed as she readies her invisible air. Her master is on the other side of that mountain gate. But the servant in front of her is way too strange. He reveals his true name willingly. He does not have a stance, and his cool enmity is transparent. I think the fact that he was taken out so quickly that- because this is the same as last time, right? This is exactly how it happened last time, where he said what his name was, and he doesn't seem to hesitate. There's something weird about him. She cannot figure out his power because of his transparency. She can see his power as a servant. Assassin is not a strong servant, so it should be easy to defeat him, but her instincts are telling her something different. Plus the fact that he just comes right out. Assassin should be all about being sneaky, but he just, like, comes right out and challenges people to fights. That she cannot beat him in a normal duel. She suppresses the strange unease and glares at Assassin. There's only one more step until they're both within range. Up or down. If either one moves, a fatal attack should be executed. Her final warning. The swordsman with the longsword calmly responds to her words. 
この門を通りたいのだなセイバー Her green eyes glare at Assassin for asking such a foolish question. He must like the answer. The long sword dances through the nights in an arc. Naraba Oshtore Isomaneva Omaino Shujin to Yarano Hinochiwa Naizo. He laughs in a cool manner. Assassin Saber charges in reply. The long sword comes down at her at the same moment, and she repels it with her invisible sword. The clash of the swords echoes through the summit. Their powers are equal, but that is not an advantage for her. <laughs> She's impatient. The enemy she must quickly defeat is a strong one that would be hard to beat even without any time constraints. <laughs> she grits her teeth and prays. That opening, that excess part of her, is permeating her body. Yeah, interesting that Assassin is supposed to be like the probably the one of the weaker ones in terms of like physical ability. Um, and yet he's pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. The battle does not end. The mountain gate is too far away. Alright, well, interesting episode. So we had quite a few things happen there. We had Shinji coming right out of the woodwork. Uh, and announcing himself as a master, similar to what he did in the last route and wanting to cooperate. With, uh, with Shiro. Uh, so they have a little bit of like a truce. They at least have like a ceasefire. Like they say that they're not going to attack each other, but it's Shinji. Like he's not to be trusted. Um, Rin thinks that whatever is going to be happening at the school is going to be happening the next day. Um, and then of course we got this whole thing with uh, Caster and, and Assassin showing up way sooner than, it feels like way earlier than the last route. Um, whether they're working together, does the does the master control both caster and assassin? And if somebody's such a strong master, the you know caster said that she killed her master. Like they must be working together, I imagine. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Like I feel like caster and assassin are the two, other than archer, are the two kind of most mysterious ones. Like we don't know too much about them because like we don't know either of their masters. Um, I'm trying to think if we even learned Caster's, uh, her, um, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, who she was, like, who her heroic spirit is. Um, don't know anything about that, as far as I remember. Um, so we're gonna continue on. Looks like we're gonna have a pretty action-filled episode next time. Saber having to get to Shiro before he is, uh, has his command spell taken away by Caster. Maybe Rin will show up, who knows. Maybe she, like, sussed out that something's going on at the Ryoto Temple and it's gonna help out. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully you guys like this episode. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned next time for part 31. Until then, bye. Special shoutouts to my top-tier patrons. Emily Hornsby, Zorn Ether, Revealing Storm, Asborn Kennedy, Icognito, Harry Gazif, and Jared Fan. 